Hello, welcome to this video. Today we're going to look at this laptop we've recently got hold of. And it, this is a very old HP Pavilion DV6000 laptop. It originally had XP Media Center, so it was one of the top end ones. And I've um, done a few upgrades. So I've put the maximum RAM in 4 gigs, put SSD in, and done a clean installation of Linux Mint Cinnamon version 20.3. So it's the latest version. Now, what's happening is, is that I have found a fault with the laptop. Basically, I'm not getting sound out of the speakers. Now, then the laptop is fully updated with its drivers and software. I can show you now. As you see, it's up to date. There's no issues at all. Now, I am getting sound from the system if you plug into any of the headphones ports at the front. So if you run a video or audio, you get through here. But I'm not getting through the laptop speakers. Now, there's two things that could be a fault. Either you could be hardware related or software related. Now, I've had software related before with Linux distros and all the laptops where I've had two laptops with dental chipsets, but same problem. One laptop worked absolutely fine with audio in and out, but the other one had issues where it had no audio from the speakers, but from the headphone socket. But it was dual booted with a Windows system, so if I went to Windows 10 that was on that, all the sound worked. So that told me it was a kernel fault with the actual system. And after a few updates, it corrected it. This, on the other hand, does have no sound at all, no matter what OS you put onto it because I've tried it with other OS, it's the same issue. And this is related to a hardware fault with these laptops. Basically what's happening is, there's a couple of cables that run from the motherboard down here, all the way to the bar at the top of the laptop here. There's one for the little media bar at the top here, so that controls volume, mute, audio, and a few other such. And there's one at the corner which controls the power button but also on that module is the connection to the speakers which is up here now, the reason why I also know it could, is that it's a hardware fault is because the button here doesn't work this is the power button so there's no LED there here if I've pushed the button here normally you get a fist and saying what you want to do and it's not working and also I can't turn the laptop on there so I press these shortcut keys which these laptops had to give you quick access to the DVD player or media center. But you can see it's receiving power because of the LED lights here. So what this laptop needs is a new cable under the board here. Now if you didn't want to do that and just wanted to get it working, you can just swap the two cables round. But you lose all the media center keys, but your audio and power button will work. But what we're going to do here is replace the entire cable on there to fix the issue. Like I said before, this is the entire range of this laptop that had this issue. So when you go online, just look for a quick audio part for the HP Pavilion DV6000 series. You just need to put that in and find the cable because all laptops have this that code and then it has some three digits afterwards. And that normally represents the tougher model it is like the drive space, the RAM, what OS an example. But this DB6000 is the entire model range of the series. And that's what I've done. So this is the actual cable I've got. And we're going to install it in we're going I'm going to install it into this laptop. So I'll show you how this is done. So what I'm going to do first is shut this down and get it all set up so I can show you how to um, install this new cable. So let's start taking the parts necessary off the laptop. So it would be the keyboard and the palm rest. So what you do is you turn the laptop over. And you need to remove the battery. You can get hold of the battery. And 
Tough, she's got to remove this door here, this holds the um, RAM compartment, but there's one screw under here for the keyboard. Let's just take the screws out. Okay, and there's this slot here. It's got a little keyboard icon, so that is one of the screws you've got to remove. And then the battery compartment, there is another additional one. There's one here, that's another keyboard one here, another keyboard, and we also have to remove these three silver screws above. These hold the knife plate on the top, which has got the speakers and the media controls. So you can remove these. All the screws is all the screws are the same size for the keyboard and these would be smaller so you can't mix them up Now I'll flip the laptop back over, open it up and they should see the, so now it's all loose, these two parts will easily come out. So I think you remove this first and now this will be removed, so just pry on the edges with a exposure or anything blunt and it pops up. And when I turn this over, you might just see them here. And see the top here, this is where the control board is. So this is the speakers. And this is the one for the media. But you can see there's a header here and a header here. So this cable down here controls the media. This one here is the one that we've got a problem with. This is the one that is controlling this little circuit board which controls the speakers and the power button. And like I say, you can swap these two over if you're not worried about the immediate keys, but this is going to replace it all. So we're going to remove both of these by lifting these little brown latches up. Just pop it out. Same here. This makes it easier. Just be very careful and don't break them off. Due to its age and lift it out. And same thing, you just unplug this for the audio. So that's, oh, sorry, no, that's not a, that's the microphone, sorry, the speaker's in here. My mistake, <laughs> first time removing it, there's a, there's a camera mic here. So that's the microphone. So there you go, so that's the whole module there. And like I say, <laughs> it's just these two parts here. So back to that one side. And like I say, it's this one on the left hand side, so we've got to remove the keyboard. So just lift it up gently and upside down and release it from its cradle by pushing up these two little black things here on the side gently. And just pop it up, it makes it easy. And you see, these cables run all the way down the bottom of the cable bits. This one on the left is the one we want. So that should... Oh, this is a nice little thing I've just noticed. Lovely. I just realised something, that this little header, the release locks are underneath this shell. So it's not simply just <laughs> remove the keyboard mouse, you've got to remove this upper shell. I can show you that. It's the locks just right underneath there, so you've got to remove the 
the palm rest as well. But I think you might be able to release it by... No, because it's literally under there, so... So I might be able to... Uh, can I get to it from under here? Oh, no, no. It's not locked on. These are forced in. So a bit more careful look at it. There's no lock latches. They just... They just fit in. So, oh, so that's okay. How much wrong? I think you just put it hard. Hopefully. There we go. Yeah, it's just pushing. And we need to remove this cable. It's taped under. One, two, three. There you go. So there's our faulty cable. And like I said, this is a common fault with these laptops, this cable. And I can see one reason why is because it's on that part there, it's been pressed a lot. And like I said, this is on a touch screen, so that's probably just burnt it out. So let's get the new one in. This is the new one. And it goes and it goes in the same one. Doesn't matter which end. They're identical, so even way it fit, so just push it in there first and so that went up that way. You just push it in until it goes all the way in. Push in the tool. Yeah. Okay, that's max. And you can try and squeeze it underneath where it was before, it will bend back if you want. Underneath the two little brackets there. And there you go. As you can see, this is slightly longer than that. And the downside of this, this is a tad long, but that should be fine. I should be able to squeeze it underneath the board. Yeah, because this cable is just in a multiple series of laptops, so this should still be fine. You just may have to, you know, you may have to just put it in a few times to get it in, but it will fit. You can get the smaller size for that, so let's just sort it out now. Because the keyboard should hold it down. Yeah, so just fit around a little bit, get it in. But it should work. Uh, put the keyboard back in. Bye. Put this under the latch. Open the latch. Cable sets and goes down, and it only goes in one place. Should push it all the way in. And that's just it. These can be fiddly at times, but just make sure it goes in. Hmm. <laughs> She's not going in. Okay, so the contacts are here. So it's either under the latch or over the latch. Now they can be fiddly at times, but you just need to be patient with it. Better we're going. Just be patient with it. About damaging the keyboard. Yeah, I think that's it. Pull it out for a bit and then slide that back on so it goes under there. Like a rubber membrane here, so they slip down a bit.
you can see that will just there's a fan here so you can just get it just squeeze it right and should work with the fan yeah once you put the screws down it will hold it down so there will be no damage to it but like i say if you have any issues you can just swap them over and then we need to hook up the this back to the motherboard So make sure you clip this part on here. Same fit. Oh no, sorry. It goes here and it's on latches. So let's do the big one first because it's used to put in. And it goes in one way. This latch is pretty loose. Under the latch and push them down to lock them in. Like that. That's one. Plug the mic back in, only goes in one way. Like that. And the final connector goes under this one this one's a bit fiddly because it's a bit tighter than the other one but it will go in make sure these latches are open push it back as much as possible with your finger try and get it in oops not in because you can see the line is not fully in it's a problem with these type connectors. There we go. So that's lined in like that. So that's all the connectors there. So gently turn it over. And then put this back on. These will clip in, but the screws will hold it back down. Do that a few times until it will click some creaks. I'm not sure if the keyboard is connected, but I do that later on because I know it's bits of fiddly. So turn it back up and then put the screws back in. So the silver one's in the top. Just hold the face plate in. Like that. And then the two screws at the top for the keyboard. And then the final one in that little hole. Okay, all screws in. Put the cover back on. Screw that on so you get it. Battery goes back in. So this laptop is now ready to testing. So I'll just reposition everything. Okay, laptop's reconnected to its power, reconnected to its um, LAN port. I'm going to use that, and hopefully, if I've got it all right, this should power up without me doing without pushing these button. So let's see. And there we go. The and these back lit up the top there, and it's pound on without me having to push it so I've got to wait for it to boot okay it's got 
wait for it to boot up and now test the audio I did just hear a pop from the um, laptop you won't be hearing anything because I've got the um, noise reduction on but Yep, I just got the startup tone from the Linux Mint, so audio is working. That is very good. So all it was is that one little cable that caused all that. And like I say, if I push the power button now, I get the what it wants me to do. So everything is fully working, so I just cancel that, so it's fully working. And the is working, the beep and and these also beep now because they come through the speakers, so you can hear these now. So they originally came from the uh... so they originally came from the because um... all these were beeps that were coming from the audio speakers. So there we go, a fully operational laptop with its audio again. And all it took was that stupid little cable here that was this little cable was causing all the issue. And like I say, you can swap them over if you don't want to buy a cable or you can't find one. Or just look for HP Pavion DB6000. I think the 9000 cable works the same. You just have to fit around a bit, but there you go. Fully operating again. So I hope this um, video has helped for a bit. And I hope to do more in the future. So thank you for watching this video.